Hey guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods and welcome back to the 1UZ rebuild series. This is part two of the actual rebuild. The last video I assembled the bottom end and in this video we'll be working on the top end and maybe some timing components too. Um, Summit Racing helped me out a ton with the bottom end rebuild. They also have some stuff for the top end and the timing. So I'll be using a ton of Summit Racing parts in this video as well. And I'll have links in the description down below when I can. Um, the first thing we're gonna be doing, which I'm not really doing anything, but I'm taking the cylinder heads to my local machine shop and I'm gonna have them check the heads for flatness and while they are there, they're going to install the new valve seals that I got from Summit Racing. Here are the two part numbers that I got from Summit Racing. I forget which one of these is the intake and the exhaust, but you will need a set for both. Um, one of these will take care of all of the exhaust valves and the other will take care of all of the intake valves. Um, but I'm gonna send the heads off to the machine shop. They can do these while they check the heads for flatness. But if you are dead set on doing these yourself, uh, a bunch of years ago, I did a video on how to change the valve seals on my 1JZ. I can link to that video down below as well. And that will show you how to do them with the heads and the engine in the vehicle. Um, but I didn't feel like doing that with this engine. And uh, with the magic of editing, we will start assembling. All right, got my starter back from being rebuilt. Only cost me $63 to get it totally rebuilt. Um, I don't feel like I need to show you how to install it, um, but I did this because I certainly don't want to replace the starter when it's in the car. That is going to be a nightmare. So now let's install the cylinder heads and we'll start off with the right side. We will be using these Felpro multi-layer steel gaskets that I got from Summit Racing. Here are the part numbers. I don't remember which is the left or the right, but you will need those two part numbers. And here is the head bolt set we will be using. This is also another Felpro kit that I got from Summit Racing. Now my cylinder heads, when I took them to the machine shop, they made sure they were flat and they did the valve seals. So that is all good to go. I got charged $190 for them to make sure both heads were flat and do all 32 valve seals. So worth the investment. And now I'm just taking this brass or bronze wire brush to make sure this surface is really clean before we put the head gaskets on. All right, so this is the part number for the head gasket on the right side of the engine, and that's what we're gonna be working on. And conveniently, just like the OEM gasket, it is labeled R. And it's gonna go on just like this. Now we'll take our new head bolts and lube them up real good and place them all in the head. Uh, so apparently I just figured this out, but that box of Felpro head bolts is only for one cylinder head so I need to get me another box. I missed a very important step when putting in these head bolts and I'm glad I caught myself. Here are the old head bolts. Each one has a washer on it. So you're gonna take the washer and put it on your new bolts, which I totally forgot to do. And don't worry, I'm not actually impacting these on. Uh, this Milwaukee stops once it sees torque. So I'm gonna put the washer back on all the bolts and then we'll proceed with torquing it. And now I'm just going to snug these up by hand and I'm gonna put the torque sequence on the screen here. And we're first gonna torque them to 29 foot pounds after I get them snug by hand. Now we're gonna do the same torque sequence, but now we're gonna add 90 degrees.
now that the right head is on, now we can do the left head. Here is the part number for the head gasket. Now that we have both heads installed and torqued, the next step is to install the crank pulley. And we are going to put it into the certain timing position that they say to do in the factory service manual. And that is to align this notch right here on the crank pulley with this bolt right here. So you want those two lined up and then we can go ahead and install some of our camshafts. Moving on to the camshafts, we have our intake cam in the vise on the hexagonal part of the cam. You want to be very careful when placing this into a vise that you don't damage it. Now we're going to attempt to replace the seal. We have to take off this uh, VVTi thing. Um, there's a cap here, then a bolt inside, and it should slide off, and then hopefully we can get the new seal on. But we're not like rebuilding the VVTi. Um, we're just doing the seal. And down in here is an Allen bolt. That cap was a 19 millimeter. Now the bolt in here is a H10 uh, Allen. Now we're gonna remove the four bolts that secure this gear on with a five millimeter Allen. Now we can remove the seal. Here are the cam seals that I got from Summit Racing. It comes with two seals, one for each intake cam. And now we can put this back together. There's a little pin right here that has to line up with this keyhole. Now we're gonna to torque these bolts to 66 inch pounds. Okay, now we'll put this back on. There is a little key slot for this pin here, so make sure you line it up properly. You'll know you have it in right when you can't twist it. Put the hex bolt back in. I did not replace this seal. I'm not sure if I got a replacement for it. If I, if I find it, I'll maybe come back at another time and replace it. But as for now, we're going to torque this to 58 foot pounds. This is proving to be quite the challenge, just getting the vise to hold on to it. <sighs> All right, you can install the cap now. This should be a bit easier. The cap gets torqued to 11 foot pounds, a whopping 11. We're gonna start off by installing the cams on the right cylinder head. We're gonna put assembly lube on all of these surfaces where the cam will, will rest. This shit is nasty. We also applied assembly lube to the cam itself. You're going, you're hot. So I will put the instructions from the factory service manual on the screen, but it says when you install the right hand camshafts, you want the two dots on the cam to be 10 degrees up from center. Um, there's a paint mark on my cam gears, and it looks like I have them in the right spot. Um, kind of difficult to understand. I wish there were some better marks, but um, like I said, I'll have it on screen for you to decipher, and hopefully <laughs> that's correct. Now we're going to install this piece, the cam cap or whatever that goes in the front. Uh, we, need to we need to apply some RTV silicone here, here, and here.
make sure that you have this oil screen yeah. in place. For the bolts that go on this cam cap, you do not apply oil to the threads or the head. Now we can put all the cam caps on here as well, but you're gonna oil these threads. Now we're gonna try to use some plastic pry bars or something and get this seal into the cam cap. Okay, now we're going to uniformly tighten these bolts. I will have the torque sequence for you on screen. I already got these snugged. All of these bolts are going to get torqued to 16 newton meters or 12 foot pounds. However, these two bolts, bolts C, are going to get torqued to seven and a half newton meters. Okay? So, all the same torque, but these two are slightly less. Oh yeah. I got the new seal installed in the left side camshaft and I laid the cams in. I put assembly lube on everything. Um, and to align it, it's really hard to show you on camera. It doesn't show up well, but I'll try to have a picture from the service manual. But you want the two dots on these gears facing each other perfectly parallel. Um, you can kind of see on mine, there's still that paint marker mark and the, the dots are pointing at each other, but I'm gonna see if I can tighten it down, you know, just like I did on the other side, and hopefully nothing breaks. So let's get all the caps on and see what the heck happens. So I got this installed, and with my screwdrivers again, I got the cam seal pushed in, and I don't think I have to show you because it's the same thing I just did, but now I'll go ahead and torque all these cam bolts down, and we'll continue on. And with both heads on, now we can install this crossover pipe here and install the two gaskets that came with the conversion kit. Four gaskets came with the conversion kit and uh, the other two go up here. So let's get this pipe on. I didn't show it on camera, but I took a wire wheel to this piece. Um, as you can see, the aluminum on this engine has been pretty corroded. So the bits that you are going to see, I'm trying to make them look a little bit better. Some things I'm gonna powder coat, um, but I'm gonna try to make it look a little better. But since this isn't directly in front, <laughs> I wasn't gonna put too much effort into it. I just took off the corrosion. Next, install the gaskets for the front crossover. Get this bulky unit installed. Now I gotta find the nuts for this thing. All right, that does it for the second part of the 1UZ engine rebuild series. Once again, big thanks to Summit Racing for helping us out with this project. It would not be possible without them. Make sure you come back and watch part three, which will be the final episode in this boat series to see how we get it to look like this.